Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So, uh, we are uh, discussing uh, about that solid fluid operations even in the previous uh, lecture we were discussing about the mechanism of particle size reduction under the module of uh, size reduction. So, in this lecture uh, we will uh, uh, try to uh, learn something about what are the general machines for the size reduction uh, are being used in industry. So, uh, here we will uh, discuss about the general machines for size reductions, basic principles of size reducing machines and uh, what are the advantage and disadvantage and its uh, respective applications that we will learn here. As we have already know uh, that uh, what is the importance of particle size reduction, the particle size will be reduced to increase reactivity or to liberate valuable minerals that is held within the particles to improve uniformity of mixing, even to improve physical stability, to facilitate the rate of dissolution, even to improve the adsorption rate and to improve the flowability to rapid effective uh, drying, even the size reduction will permit the separation of unwanted ingredients. And also main objective is to size reduction to get the workable size for a particular process and also making the powder which is widely used in our daily life. Now, as we know that uh, the key properties of the solid which is to be known for designing a process or selecting an equipment for this size reductions are particle size shape, flowability stickiness, elasticity, dust explosion, morphology, hardness of the particle, reactivity of the particle, toxicity, corrosivity and uh, what is that moisture content and composition. So, these are the main you know solid properties based on which that you can select the equipment even you can design the process that we have discussed earlier also. Even in the previous lecture we have discussed what are the different mechanism which are very common that has already been discussed. Those common mechanisms are compression, impact, attrition, shear and some non mechanical like thermal shock, explosive shattering electrohydraulic forces based on which the particle size can be reduced. Now, we will try to classify the different size reducing equipment okay, based on different characteristics. Here in the slide we can see that here there are four types of size reducing equipment. Type 1 is called crushers. Here in this case the mechanism for this crusher is compression. Generally coarse and fine particles are being crushed by this crusher and based on the mechanism of compression. Here some equipment like jaw crusher, gravity crusher, roll crusher, hammer crusher, even cone crusher you will see for this reducing the size of coarse and fine particles. Then type 2 it is called grinders. This grinders are acting based on the mechanism of impact. Here in this case not very coarser, not very finer particles will be you know considered for this reduction like it is called intermediate and fine particles. And in this case uh, some uh, special uh, type of equipments are being used, those are called mills like hammer mills, bowl mills, roller mills, attrition mills, tumbling mills, rod mills, ball mills. Uh, even pebble mills, tube mills, these are the different types of you know mills under the tumbling action. And also this hammer mills uh, is also one important based on which you can reduce the size upon uh, mechanism of you know impact. 
type 3 it is called ultra fine grinders the mechanism here in this case shearing the particle size which are less than almost 6 millimeter are being you know reduced by this type of grinders generally hammer mills with internal classification fluid energy mills and agitated mills are being used you know for the reducing the size into a ultra fine powders based on the mechanism of shearing and another one it is called the type 4 this is basically a you know cutting machines here in this case shearing and laser for a definite size and shape of particles to obtain this type of machines are being used like knife cutters shredders even dicers millers are the common equipment for this cutting machine okay and type 2 and type 3 the grinders and ultra fine grinders you will see the whenever the different machines will be used for this type of grinding there will be a certain you know media or some mechanical provisions based on which you can have this you know grinding or reduction of the size based on the mechanism of impact and shearing like here one media it is called you know tumbling vibratory or agitated or planetary so these are the mechanism or mechanical uh, you know way that is tumbling action vibratory action agitation based on which that impact and shearing will happen another you will see that some roller will be used like you know uh, roll machines it is called okay roller machines based on which that uh, particles can be uh, uh, reduced its size here various types of roller machines will be there like hammer beater pin case universal roller all those different types of roller in this case the mechanism is mainly impact mechanism based on which that size will be reduced another one it is called attrition based you know grinding generally jet energy will be supplied to you know break the coarser particles into finer particles by you know attrition that means by interaction of the solid particles among them so fluid energy here it will be supplied as a kinetic energy form and there it will be enhancing the interaction between the solid and solid okay and it is generally being done in a pancake jet mill loop or over spiral type of you know jet machine even opposing jet fluidized bed type of you know machines under this category and in this case you can get very finer particles just by you know attrition or interaction between the particles now you will see that let us consider that type 1 this is crushers that is coarse and fine crushers uh, the mechanism is compression there are three types of uh, you know crushers available these are called jaw crusher another one is called gyratory crusher and uh, roll crusher so in this case you will see that feed size generally is being used for this type of crusher for getting the product size up to a certain range here feed size range generally follow 1500 to 40 millimeter and product size are generally getting as a range of 50 to 5 millimeter a primary crusher in this case the operates on the run of you know mine material accepting any time anything that comes from the mine phase and breaking into 150 to 150 millimeter that is 6 to 10 inches so in this case the primary crusher is operates on run of mine material initially and then secondary crusher will be used to reduce that primary materials and which will be reducing the that lumps of that you know mining materials into a very fine materials like around 6 millimeter and uh, then then uh, type 2 it is called grinder where that intermediate and fine particles will be crushed into or grind into a finer one here the mechanism is impact 
generally hammer mills, roll mills, okay, like uh, bowl or roller mills like this, and attrition mills, and some other special type it is called tumbling mill, rod mill, ball mill, pebble mill, tube mill, and compartment mills are being used for grinding intermediate and fine particles. In this case, feed size range would be 50 to 2 millimeter and product size will be 5 to 0 0.1 millimeter. So, these grinders reduce crushed feed to powders. The product from a intermediate grinder might pass a 40 mesh screen. Most of the product from a fine grinder would pass a 200 you know mesh screen with 74 micron opening. Okay. And then type 3 ultra fine grinders here mechanism is shearing generally hammer mills with internal classification here as shown in the picture and fluid energy mill and agitated mills are commonly used ultra fine grinders for reducing the feed size of less than 6 millimeter to a product size within a range of 1 to 20 uh, micrometer. In this case, whatever mills are being used under this classification to reduce the solids to fine particles of average size 1 to 20 micrometer are called ultrafine grinders. Now, these ultrafine grindings can be done based on dry and wet basis in both way. In the case of dry basis, you will see that high speed hammer mills with internal and external classifications are used. And weight basis, they are fluid energy or jet mills, colloid mills and agitated mills are used for this purpose. And the final type, it is called cutting machines. They are mainly shearing and laser actions will be used for grinding some materials into a definite size and shape as per design and product size generally will be 2 to 10 millimeter in length. So, in this case generally knife cutters, dicers and millers are used and the machines which are being used to reduce that particle to a fixed required size depends on you know design of the material or size which is to be required for a specific purpose. And these requirements are met by devices that cut, chop or tear the feed into a product with the desired characteristics. Now, jaw crusher, what is the working principle for that? In this figure, you will see that the mechanical pressure in this case to be achieved by the two jaws of the jaw crusher of which one jaw will be fixed while the other will be reciprocating. Jaw crushers are classified on the basis of that position of the pivoting of the you know swing jaw in the jaw crusher. So, there you will see that three types of these you know jaw crushers based on that position of the pivoting of the swing jaw position. One is called black crusher. In this case, the jaw crusher you know swing jaw is fixed at the upper position. You will see in the picture here, this black jaw crusher here it is pivoting at this upper position. Whereas, doze crusher in this case the swing this, this will be swing the swing will be you know uh, fixed at a lower end position here and the universal crusher here the one jaw which will be you know pivoting that will be pivoted you know at the intermediate position. So, this swing jaw is fixed at an intermediate position. So, there are three classes of this jaw crusher one is called black crusher where swing jaw is fixed at the upper position like this and jaws crusher the swing jaw is fixed at the lower position and universal crusher it is uh, designed in such way the swing jaw will be fixed at an intermediate position like this. In this figure see one you know a uh, jaw crusher these are the uh, one jaws another jaws is like this this jaws is fixed and here this jaw is uh, pivoted at the upper position. So, this type of uh, jaw crusher will be called as black jaw crusher. Okay. Here uh, feed is coming as a you know coarser particles and uh, it will be going through that you know a small gap of these two jaws okay. 
and uh, during that you know reciprocating of one jaws you will see there will be a compression uh, there will be a pressure on that you know particles and because of which that particles will be you know becoming into a uh, smaller size of that particle. So, in this way the jaw crusher works. So, what is the C uh, capacity of the jaw crusher? Here see in the your animation that here jaw crusher the feed materials is coming okay, as a feed and it is coming through the gap of this jaw as one jaw is pivoting at uh, you know upper end. So, this is a black jaw crusher. So, in this case you will see that some uh, you know capacity of this jaw crusher will be there. The theoretical capacity of the jaw crusher generally depends on density of the material, jaw width, area of the swing, even what will be the number of rotation of the swings per minute and also what will be the porosity of the particles. So, based on this you know theoretical capacity, uh, you can define that theoretical capacity as uh, given in the equation number 6 here. So, it will be Q is equal to rho P A W J N J uh, 1 minus epsilon by 60. So, it will be kg per hour. Okay. So, this capacity will be in terms of you know what will be the uh, feed rate or uh, what is that uh, how much feed will be you know with respect to time it will be broken into a pieces. So, here based on this equation you can calculate what will be the you know capacity. Okay. And then uh, you will see that uh, uh, one example here like this uh, jaw crusher is operating at a uh, speed of 225 number of swings per minute to reduce the size of particle of density here 3690 kg per a meter cube and porosity is 0 0.20 and the crusher is designed with a swing of 0 0.25 meter into 0 0.5 meter and the jaw width is given as 0 0.05 meter. What is the capacity in kg per hour of the jaw crusher? So, here rope is the density is given to you, what is the jaw width it is also given to you 0 0.05 meter and swing area is given as 0.25 into uh, 0 0.50 that means area is like this and then uh, NJ is equal to number of rotation of swings per minute this is 225 uh, minute inverse and porosity is given as 0 0.20. So, if we uh, substitute all those you know values in the uh, equation of that theoretical capacity of the jaw crusher finally, you can get after simplification as 69.19 kg per hour. Next you will see that uh, some standard range of efficiencies for size reduction equipment will be there. So, all those equipments whatever it will be used those uh, will have some you know efficiency within a certain range. So, like jaw and roll crushers uh, will have the typical efficiency like 70 to 90, impact crushers it will be 30 to 40, roller ring mills it will be 1 to 15 percent, ball mills 5 to 10 percent and uh, impact mills is 1 to 10 percent. So, these are the typical efficiency of that size reduction equipment and uh, you will see that uh, some also uh, advantage and disadvantage of that uh, you know size reduction equipment. Here uh, if we consider that jaw crusher it will have some advantage and disadvantage. Now, what are the advantage like it will be simple structure and uh, it is uh, easier to inspect, repair, maintenance are very convenient and uh, work is reliable, small machines body and easy to you know device also. Disadvantage is lower productivity sometimes it will happen because of that material characteristics high power consumption, bigger vibration is the main important uh, disadvantage here and the small crushing ratio, what is that crushing ratio that means here uh, what is the final product size to the initial product size. You will see that smaller crushing ratio it will uh, obtain and then you to that uneven particle size and then cannot crowd feeding uh, ore. So, these are some disadvantage. Now, why are actually this uh, jaw crushers can be used? The jaw crusher can be suitable to use for rock quarries, sand and gravel, mining, construction and uh, demolition, recycling, construction uh, aggregates, road and railway construction, metallurgy and chemical industry. So, these are some you know uh, specific uh, you know applications where 
that jaw crushers are suitable to use. Then we are coming to the you know equipment it is called gyratory crusher. Here you will see that uh, gyratory crusher is gyratory crusher basically the similar in basic concept to a jaw crusher which will consist of a you know concave surface and a conical head. Both surfaces are typically lined with manganese steel uh, surfaces as shown in the picture here. The inner cone has a slight circular movement, but does not rotate here in this case and the movement is generated by an eccentric arrangement. So, here you can see that this uh, animation uh, of this gyratory crusher how it works. Okay. So, in this case uh, the basic function is same as that you know jaw crusher only thing is that there will be compression uh, of that you know surface with the solid material this is here only thing is that geometrical shape will be cone in shape. Okay. And next uh, the cone crusher here also same that cone crusher also the same uh, function will have same function compared to that you know gyratory crusher uh, with less stiffness in the crushing chamber and more of a parallel zone between uh, crushing zone. In this case uh, you will see that this uh, cone crusher will uh, you know breaks uh, rock by squeezing this uh, rock between an uh, eccentrically gyrating a spindle just yes, shown in the picture which is uh, actually covered by uh, some uh, wear resistance material okay, and the enclosing conclave uh, you know hopper that will be covered by uh, some uh, you know materials like uh, manganese concave or a bowl inner. Here uh, there are two types of you know uh, cone crusher generally uh, being used one should be called a uh, short headed type with a steep uh, crushing cone and some others will be you know spring cone crusher and hydraulic cone crusher and gyratory cone crusher. Here also those have some advantage disadvantage and applications like uh, advantage here big productivity or capacity, lower power consumption, relatively stable work, little vibration and big crushing ratio, uniform product size like this. Disadvantages are complex structure it is the higher cost investment and then you know that higher machine body, inconvenient transportation, unfavorable to handle sticky ore. Uh, even operational and maintenance are complex than you know jaw crusher. These cone crushers can be used uh, for crushing you know that uh, the hard rock materials you know that as they are suited to secondary, tertiary and quaternary uh, applications. You will see that it is used for the production of high quality aggregate and uh, sub base materials. And then it is coming as smooth roll crusher. You will see that uh, in this case through two opposite rotating grinder roller the feed materials will be passing with the aid of friction and uh, gravity. In this case the material will be beat into a crushing chamber and uh, make it squeeze and grind and broken. So, here the finally after uh, you know material crushing it will be discharged. Okay and this whatever materials is coming after this crushing it will be very uh, finer in size and it will be discharging into a you know discharging port. And in this case uh, uh, this uh, feed materials to be feeding from a mouth uh, which is actually uh, above to this roller and uh, whenever these two opposite rolls will be rotating and uh, the solid particles will be passing through the gap of these two rollers. In this case uh, the friction and gravity will be main action based on which that particle will be reduced its size. Now question is the what is the main design aspect of this uh, roll crusher. In this case uh, what are the crushing forces in a, a roll crusher that you have to find out and also what are the basic geometry based on which you can say that what should be the roll crusher and what will the materials to be feed, what will the maximum size of the materials to be feed that also to be you know considered. So, when the rolls just grieve a particle we can write the force balance as per 
picture shown given uh, here. You will see that uh, two rollers here with a uh, diameter of R R and feed materials which will be you know gripped through this you know that uh, two rollers uh, which uh, radius is R F that is for feet radius you can say that. And uh, when a bar uh, placed this you know you know materials on these two rolls, uh, you will see that uh, based on the geometry there uh, you know it will make a angle theta by 2 here as shown figure like this uh, and this will be your theta. This is basically the tangent of these two roller where the speed material will be tossed on the surface of the rolls and uh, what is the angle it will be formed it is called angle of nip ok angle of nip and from this roller there will be a crushing force as a C it will be acting on the surface of this you know feed material ok and here you will see that if we do a uh, this force balance on this uh, you know material you will see that we are having this uh, two components of this crushing forces one will be in the horizontally up another will be horizontally downward. So, you will see that these two forces will be as you will see that C sin theta by 2 this is the upward acting and the downward acting it will be what is that C cos theta by 2 and these two forces uh, you will see that uh, it will be balanced whenever that crushing actions will happen. So, at an equilibrium condition we can say that this uh, you know upwardly acting that crushing forces that is C sin theta by 2 that will be equal to you know mu into cos theta by 2. What is mu here? Here in this case mu is called that uh, coefficient of friction. This coefficient of friction generally within a range of 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 ok. So, uh, in this case if we know that theta as an angle of nif is less than 25 degree uh, then you will say that uh, you can prevent the particle slippage in the rolls. So, here angle of nip should be you know less than 25 degree and also the angle of nip also establishes the maximum particle size according to this equation. Here cos theta by 2 that will come R R plus A by R R plus R P ok and uh, that will be equal to if we multiply 2 on this uh, you know denominator and numerator uh, then you can simply write that in terms of diameter and what is the gap between two rolls that will be represented by 2 a. So, d r plus 2 a divided by d r plus d f. d r is basically what the diameter of roll. So, we are having this uh, cos theta by 2 that is angle of nip can be calculated based on this you know uh, equation 8. So, what should be the angle of nip and uh, based on which you can calculate what would be the uh, feed material diameter or roller diameter. Uh, to get that you know maximum particle size uh, based on this crushing by roll crusher. Let us have an example for this in a roll crusher a roll of diameter 1 meter each are set in such a way that minimum clearance between the crushing surfaces is 15 millimeter. If the angle of nip is 31 degree what will be the maximum diameter of the particle? Uh, which can be you know crushed by this roll crusher. Now, in this case you have to find out what is the maximum diameter of the particle that means here diameter of the feed material. So, here diameter of the roll is given to you 1 meter clearance between two rolls it is given 0 0.015 meter angle of nip is given 31 degree. So, the angle of nip establishes the maximum particle size according to this you know equation like cos theta by 2 that will be equal to R R plus A divided by R R plus R P or D R plus D P by D R plus D F. In this case theta is given. So, cos theta is 31 degree you have to convert it to radian. So, cos 31 into pi divided by 2 into 180 that will be equal to here D R is given 1, D P is given 0 0.015 and then uh, you will see D R is equal to 1 and then D F you have to find out. So, from this equation it implies that d f should be equal to 0 0.053 meter or 53 millimeter. So, based on this problem you can easily calculate what should be the particle diameter which is to be fed into the roll pressure. 
therefore maximum diameter of the particle which can be crossed by the roll pressure is here according to this problem it will be 53 millimeter. Then what is the capacity of roll crusher? The capacity depends on type of material you know that uh, size of feed and product, width of the roll, rotating speed and uniformity of feed material which is to be introduced in the roll crusher. The capacity represented by Q can be you know directly calculated from this equation as given here as equation number 9 which is generally 16 to pi dr w omega l rho p where dr is equal to diameter of the roll w is the width of the roll and uh, omega is the speed of that roll and l is the rolls gap it is generally 2a as shown earlier also rho p is equal to uh, bulk density of the material in terms of ton per meter cube. So, here you can easily calculate what will be the capacity of that roll crusher by this equation. Now, in this case you have to remember that the capacity Q of the roll crusher is directly proportional to its width diameter dr of the roll and also the speed of the revolution of these rolls. And uh, in this case you have to remember that rotating speed for light duty it will be uh, within a range of 100 to 300 rpm whereas for heavy duty uh, this rotating speed will be 75 to 100 rpm. Let us do an example for this a roll crusher having roll width 0.8 meter and roll of diameter 1 meter is to be used to crush the material of bulk density 1.68 ton per meter cube at a capacity of 250 ton per hour. The gap between the rolls is 0.012 meter under continuous and steady feeding conditions what will be the rotating speed of the rolls of the roll crusher. This is your problem. So, in this case everything is given here almost dr is equal to given width also given omega that means speed of the rolls given gap of the roll is given and density of the materials given. So, if you substitute this in this equation you will get the uh, speed of the rolls which is coming as 82.24 rpm. This roll crusher also has some advantage and disadvantage. The advantage is like this energy saving and environmental protection. Roll crusher with stable performance is very safe to use. At the same time you can say that the energy saving of the machine is also very good and the power consumption is very low. Disadvantages are that sometimes you will see that the abrasion of the roller surface changes the gap between the two rollers which will result you the uneven product size distribution and in this case you require frequent cleaning as well as repairing. The actual crushing effect of roll crusher you will see that for sand making in flat material is not ideal due to the you know many gaps between two rollers and the roll materials uh, you will see that leaks thus you know reducing the you know actual crushing effect. So, due to the simple structure the production capacity of the roll crusher it will be a uh, little bit low which requires continuous and uniform feeding. These roll crushers can be used in the run of mine feeds, coal, trona, salt, glass and other friable minerals in the mining and recycling industries. Trona means trisodium hydro you know uh, gen, uh, hydrogen uh, dicarbonate uh, dehydrate it is called trona. Okay. So, for reducing this uh, trona also uh, this roll crusher can be used. Tooth roll crusher you see here instead of uh, smooth roll here uh, the crusher is made up of a tooth roll uh, assembled as shown in the picture uh, which crushes uh, the incoming feed material against uh, a crushing plate. And here see that uh, uh, some tooth will be fixed on the uh, rolling uh, surfaces. Uh, here some will be single roll with tooth and some will be double roll with tooth and it is designed to reduce the larger feed sizes to the desired product size at a 6 is to 1 ratio of reduction while uh, producing a considerably lower percentage of fines. The working principle of the roll crusher machine 
of both the rolls with tooth is that the two tooth rollers rotate in the opposite direction and it will give you the impact on the solid particles and based on which that particles will be reducing its size. And then uh, uh, it will also have some you know advantage and disadvantage. The tooth roll crusher has some advantages like that it will be versatile than smooth roll crushers within the you know limitation that they cannot handle very hard solids whereas uh, disadvantages are due to the simple structure the production capacity of you know reliable tooth roll crusher will be low and in this case the cleaning is also not easier ok. So, application is that they are uh, this type of tooth roll crusher are used generally for brittle materials such as coal and salts they pull in pieces that are only 1.5 to 4 times smaller than the diameter of the you know roller. Then another type of you know a size reducing machine it is called tumbling mills. Here in this case the cylindrical shell which will be slowly turning about its horizontal axis and filled about half of its volume with some grinding medium. The grinding medium may be you know some will be ball that ball will you know that keep the friction between that solid materials which is a feed as well as you know surface of the drum inside and then pebble mill they are pebbles instead of ball it will be used pebble shape there may be you know oval shape some mat, uh, you know some solid materials to be used and then uh, some will be rod mill the you know instead of ball it will be used as a rod so that it will get the more contact uh, with the solid particles and uh, also uh, for a specific you know application for this rod mill will be used based on the design and also you will see that uh, it will be as a chain or length type of uh, you know see their uh, tube or rod will be used inside the drum. So, the grinding medium will be some metal rods which will be in a rod mill length of chain or balls of material uh, rubber or wood in a ball mill flint pebbles or porcelain or zircon spheres in a pebble mill that will be used for that you know grinding. You will see that uh, in this case the by rotating on horizontal axis the ball mill you know effectively turns hard material into a uh, fine powder. Every ball mill contains grinding materials. The grinding materials are actually small balls which crush and grind the material that is inside in the you know ball mill. Usually you will see that the stainless steel or some ceramic balls to be used for this grinding uh, as a uh, medium. When the ball mill rotates you will see that the balls crush and grind the materials inside and creating in this way loose powder. Now in this case you have to remember one of the important point that you cannot you know run this ball mill at very high speed because of that centrifugal action you will see that the solid or solid ball whatever it will be used inside that you know ball mill it will be you know rotating along with the surface of that drum or ball mill. So, here whenever ball will be rotating along with that surface there will be no friction between that feed material and the balls. So, that is why you have to allow the balls to slide inside back to its ball so that there may be a, uh, the friction between the ball and the solid materials will be there. So, you have to control that velocity of the drum in such way that that the ball itself will not be rotating along with that you know surface of the drum. So, that is why there should be a certain critical speed to be followed to you know get this grinding. The speed is usually 50 to 70. 5 percent of the critical speed to be followed at that critical speed that means beyond this immediate critical speed the ball will be rotating along with the you know drum. So, that is why you have to maintain that at least 50 to 75 percent of that critical speed which would just cause the charge of balls and feed material to be centrifuged and getting the more friction between that feed material and balls. And then uh, you will see that you have to calculate what should be the critical speed there. 
Now it can be calculated from the force balance. Here in this case you will see that in the slide it is shown in the figure that the ball is rotating inside the you know ball mill at a critical speed the ball will again it will be going downward whereas drum will be continuously rotating but ball will not be rotating along with the surface of the drum. So, at a certain position where at this critical position ball if we consider here ball then what will be the force balance on this ball you will see that force balance there will be some forces acting on this ball one will be the you know uh, gravitational force another will be you know that centrifugal force. So, what will be the gravitational force and what is the component you know in the direction of you know centrifugal force or in the direction of gravitational force what will be the component of you know that centrifugal force. So, accordingly you can do the force balance. So, let us have this here if we consider that mg is the gravitational force and if we have the you know component of this gravitational force in the direction of you know that centrifugal force then we are having this mg cos alpha where is alpha alpha is shown in the picture here this is your alpha and uh, then uh, you will see that uh, centrifugal force here it will be mv square by r. So, what is that m v is equal to what here the 4 pi square n square into r will be here capital R minus small r why capital R minus small r capital R is the you know that drum radius or ball mill radius radius of the ball mill you can say and here this is the small ball which is actually used inside that ball mill. So, there will be a certain radius this is small r. So, you have to subtract to get this centrifugal force here. So, it will be effective radius will be r minus small r. So, where omega will be equal to 2 pi n this is rotational speed. So, at a critical speed we can say that alpha will be equal to 0 where cos alpha is equal to 1 and n becomes the critical speed as n c. So, we can have this n c from this equation number 10 as 1 by 2 pi into root over g by capital R minus small r. So, this is your critical speed which is to be you know remember. So, you have to remember this equation to calculate the critical speed. So, once you know that ball mill diameter uh, or radius of that ball mill and uh, what is the ball which is being used its radius is small r then you can easily calculate what will be the critical speed. Now, in this case we can say that the critical speed of the ball mill of radius r which contains ball of radius small r is proportional to capital R minus small r whole to the power minus 0.5. So, this you have to remember that means critical speed is inversely proportional to the square root of the effective radius. This effective radius is basically the subtraction of you know the radius uh, ball mill radius and uh, uh, ball radius. And then uh, uh, in this case let us have an example the what is the critical rotational speed in a revolution per second for a ball mill of 1.5 meter diameter charged with 75 millimeter diameter ball. Here in this case critical rotational speed can be calculated here nc is equal to 1 by 2 pi root over g by r minus r. So, it is uh, after substitution of value g as 9.81 and capital R is given as 0.75 and small r it is given as 0.07375. So, after simplification you will get this 0.59 revolution per second. Another example here it is uh, that a ball mill of diameter 1500 millimeter runs at an operating speed of 25 rpm with 80 millimeter diameter steel balls for grinding mining ores at what speed will the mill have to be run if the 80 millimeter balls are replaced by 40 millimeter ball all the other conditions will remain same. So, as per first condition you can say that what will be the critical speed that we can calculate as per formula given. So, it will be 35.50 rpm, but the mills is operated at 25 rpm. So, operating speed fraction will be 70.42 percent. So, as per that second condition then again here we can say that what will be the critical speed it will be coming as 35.00 rpm. Therefore, we can say that the operating speed if ball diameter is 40 millimeter okay. in the second case that will be equal to 24.65 
rpm because here whatever you know operating speed to be followed is 70.42 percent okay and then based on that 70.42 percent that operating condition for the uh, grinding with 40 millimeter balls it will be as 24.65 rpm okay and here also it has some advantage and disadvantage advantage is that it can be used for dry and wet material reliable operation grinding cheap and easy to replace can be intermittent operation but also continuous operation smash explosive materials the mill can be filled with inert gas instead of air some disadvantage like bulky size and running a strong vibration and noise there must be a solid foundation it will have some uh, low efficiency energy consumption is relatively large based on that uh, you know materials high machine noise level specially if the hollow cylinder is made of metal but much less if rubber is used and uh, it may have the longer time to get the you know desired size of the particle ball mills are used generally for grinding materials such as coals pigments and feldspar for pottery minerals glass even uh, ceramics metal oxides solar cell and semiconductor etc then another type it is called rod mill instead of ball here rod will be used in the rod mill high carbon steel rods about ranges from you know when new between 2 and 4 inches in diameter instead of ball and extending the whole length of the mill are used in place of balls the rods are free inside the mill when the mill is turned the rods stumble against one another grinding all the materials that is between them to aid in the grinding in this case water is added with the material as it enters the mill to get that you know temperature control as well as that to get that more surface you know uh, contact under the combined action of the centrifugal and frictional forces grinding metal as a media generally is to uh, brought uh, rose to a certain height and dropping or leaking drop as a falling state there so uh, these are the uh, some characteristics of this rod mill it will have some advantage like this mill will give you a very uniform fine product and low you know power consumption it is uh, you can say that uh, uh, useful with uh, sticky materials which would hold the balls together in aggregates uh, sometimes one rods must be removed from the time to time and replaced by new ones which are rather cheaper than balls disadvantage is that it may not be suitable for very high top materials and the feet should not exceed about 25 mm in size this type of uh, you know rod mill can be used for grinding ore according to different conditions the rod mill can be used in different grinding works generally the rod mill is you know suitable for coarse grinding so it is widely applied in coal chemical industry for coal water slurry okay and uh, also you can see the quartz sand silica sand even some other different type of uh, you know or materials hard materials like bauxite feldspar and also potassium tungsten ore like this here some uh, comparison of different types of tumbling mills are given you know rod mill ball mill and tube mills uh, and compartment mills as per capacity and power requirement product size and feed size in the table it is given some will be higher in capacity some will be very low in capacity even some uh, you know you'll see the rod mill will uh, you know consume more energy compared to that tube mill whereas ball mill will be very high you know power requirement to run this ball mill but some advantage of that product size it will be you'll see that in all cases uh, the product size though will be the same but speed size will be you know different then another one is called hammer mill in this case you will see that it is a steel drum which will contain a you know vertical or uh, horizontal rotating shaft or drum on which that hammers are mounted and the rotor is spun at a high speed inside the drum while material is fed into the feed hopper and in this case you will see that material is impacted by the hammer bars and is thereby shredded and expelled through screens in the drum of a selected size okay 
and uh, fibrous materials are easily handled due to the high concentration of you know shearing action by the great bars which is used uh, in this uh, you know hammer mill. So, it will have some you know uh, advantages for this capacity and maximum crushing capacity of the mill is decided by two factors here the maximum hold up and the you know mean residence time through the mill. Here the maximum crushing capacity of the mill that f max can be calculated by this equation where is u max it is generally called as uh, you know that hold up h u max uh, this can be calculated based on this equation which is uh, depending on that uh, rotational speed and also the time this time is what is that how long you are going to operate this mill. So, uh, according to this you can calculate what be the uh, capacity of the hammer mill. Here one example is given to you a task is given to reduce the size of the circle of mean size of 50 you know millimeter whose bulk density is 2610 kg per meter cube to a product mean size of 20 millimeter by a hammer mill. The design specification of the hammer mill is given as a uh, follows what is the mean residence time and the maximum crushing capacity of the hammer mill that is to be calculated. Here H u max first you have to calculate and then T you have to calculate all other parameters are given to you and then maximum capacity you can calculate here. Here also some advantage and disadvantage it is shown here in the slide it produces specific top size without the need for a closed circle crushing system this is one of the important advantage and relatively reasonable energy requirements whereas disadvantage is it is not suitable for low melting sticky or plastic like material. Application it is used for pharmaceutical industries to process wet or dry granules and disperse powder mixtures. Then another type it is called attrition mill in this case you will see that the material specially grains are rubbed between the grouped flat faces of rotating circular roughened disc. In this case the axis of roughened disc may be horizontal or vertical. There are two types of attrition mills such as single disc runner mill and double mill runner mill. Here also there will be some you know single disc and double disc runner mill will have some uh, power consumption, product size, capacity and speed and disc diameter. These are the ranges are given in this slides here for this uh, attrition mill. This attrition mill has uh, advantage like you know uh, used for grinding of soft materials whereas overfeeding lowers grinders performance and also capacity is very large this is advantage but use in spice grinding is limited here. This mill can be used to reduce the size of solid like clay and talc, wood, starch, you know insecticides, powders and also some other you know abrasive materials. Fluidized energy mill this is basically based on that you know attrition between the particles that means uh, collision uh, between the particles or interaction between the particles just by the fluid energy. So, fluidized energy mill it is also known as micronizer or jet mill this is a special type of mill that uh, consists of a hollow toroid that has a diameter of 20 to 200 millimeter that depends on the height of the loop which can be 1.2 to 2.4 meter here like this loop type you know devices where that uh, you know solid particles will be fluidized inside that and uh, based on that uh, fluidized energy that particles will be getting interaction among them. So, it is operated by particle impaction and attrition the kinetic energy of the air or maybe fluid plus the turbulence that creates the interparticle collision and particle wall collision which may result the particle size between 500 nanometer to 10 micrometers. And feed size is generally 12 millimeter, but it is more effective when the feed particles are less than 100 mesh screen. Compressed air is 6 to 9 kg of air per kg of product is generally used. Capacity of the mill is up to 6000 kg per hour. It has some advantages like this equipment is easily sterilized, the machine has no moving parts and thus the tendency of continuation due to wear of parts that can be minimized. And small particle size between uh, you know 2 and 10 micrometer or even in nanometer range is usually obtained at the end of milling. And disadvantage is that tendency of the forming aggregates or 
agglomerates after milling, generation of amorphous content due to high energy impact formation of ultra fine particles. This type of fluid energy mill can be used for thermosmolable uh, you know materials. Uh, it is choice of mill when a bigger degree of drag purity is required. You will see that uh, something that you have to know that what are the factors that affect the choice of those equipment that already described here. So, some are you know stressing mechanisms, some will be size of the feed and product and material properties, you know what are the carrier medium, mode of operation, even capacity, you will see that uh, some you know combination of other unit operations like this. So, based on that we can say that we can select that different equipments based on the size of the material. You will see the size range of the product if you are having then accordingly what will be the you know more suitable equipment or crushing machine that is given in this table here. Okay. So, uh, as per you know size range of product 1 to 0 0.1 meter you can get the here coarse crushing machine you know point 0.1 it is called crushing 1 centimeter it will be fine crushing coarse grinding 1 millimeter it will be you know intermediate grinding mill 100 micrometer fine grinding and 10 micrometer ultra fine grinding and accordingly that what will be that you know uh, different uh, uh, machine can be used it is given in the table like this. Also uh, based on the feed size and product size you can have the regime of that using different type of machines it is given in this you know picture like this here uh, within this range of uh, product feed size and the product size what type of machine to be used like JGC, JGC means jaw and gravity crusher and in this range it will be you know in this range it will be you know CC that means cone crusher similarly BRM this is generally ball and rod mills, SM region it is called hammer mills and BM it is called vibratory mills and FEM generally your fluid energy mills and SMM it is start media mills. So, these are the different types of mills which can be selected based on this you know regime of this feed size and product size. So, once you know that get the you know the product size what should be the feed size to be followed and what will be the proper equipment that can be obtained from this you know map. And uh, here in this case some other important points that you have to remember size reduction equipment in the decreasing order of average particle size that is produced by each of them is jaw crusher, then ball mill, then fluid energy mill. Energy requirement is the highest for fluid energy mill out of jaw crusher. In that case rod mill, ball mill and fluid energy mill to be sequenced and size reduction of course, hard solids using a crusher is accomplished by compression. Power required for size reduction in crushing is proportional to surface energy of the material and critical speed of the ball mill of radius r which contains ball of radius small r which can be calculated based on this equation. Okay. So, these are the some important points that you have to remember. I think uh, you have understood that uh, some you know important uh, mechanism of size reduction as well as their respective equipment which are being suitably used and, uh, and also what are the advantages and disadvantages of those equipments for the size reduction and what will be the critical uh, you know capacity and what will be the operating condition how to find out that already described in this lecture. So, uh, I think uh, uh, it will be very helpful for this uh, you know information of this size reducing machine. So, in the next lecture uh, we will be discuss discussing uh, more about uh, this energy of the size reduction and uh, there we will also describe what are the different laws to calculate the energy for the size reduction. So, thank you, have a good day.